and this is called non-cash investing in finance activity. This is a separate schedule. So it doesn't actually go into cash flow because there is no cash. This is mostly how companies will probably purchase equipment, but instead of getting equipment and using cash to buy it, they may do a long-term note, they may do common stock. So there's other ways of getting these long-term assets, and they do want us to account for these. Since there's no cash involved, these are usually on a separate schedule at the bottom of our cash flow statement, or we provide them in notes in the financial document. So we're going to get into this one. So basically this is a preview of the steps we're going to get into. We're going to focus on these three cash flows first. And then we're going to just talk a little bit about non-cash. So, how do we start? Well, we're going to start with operating activities, so with the first item on the cash flows. And there's actually two methods to do this. One is known as the direct method, which basically less than 1% of companies actually use this. It is not very um, widely used. It was actually when the cash flow statement first came out, this was how it was done, and it really was just a pain. So a lot of accounts really just got they retired the older ones and the younger had to do it. So it wasn't very great. It's also very costly. So most companies do not do it. We're not going to learn this method in this class, but if you want to read about it, I believe it is in your chapter, on the appendixes of chapter 14. You can read how to do it, a very simplified version of it, but we're not going to do it in this class. Instead, we're going to work on the indirect method, which is the most popular one. So, with the indirect, we're always going to start with net income. So we're going to use that income statement. And we're going to adjust our revenues and expenses that do not involve either receiving or paying of cash. And then we're going to look at the balance sheet. So a lot of stuff's going to happen here. And honestly, the only thing that's different in the direct and indirect is operating activities. Investing in finance is the same. So, again, if you want to go look at the direct method, you can, okay, but we're not going to go over it. So, I'm going to use a company called Rundell. And this is their income statement. And if you do read the book, the book is going to give you, um, a different company, so it's like another example if you actually want to read the book on this. But uh, overall, same concept, or I'm just using a different example for this section. So, we're going to start with the income statement. And again, the starting point for the cash flow is your net income. It happens to be 108000 this serves as our starting point. We'll go through there. And the first thing that we're going to look at is anything that does not deal with cash. Okay. And the number one item is usually depreciation. Remember, the journal, journal entry for depreciation is the debit depreciation expense, and credit accumulated depreciation. Nowhere we deal with cash. So we're going to have to remove this account. So in order to remove depreciation, we're going to actually 
added back. Okay. Because what you have to take is the opposite here. Reason why, again, we're trying to find cash. How much cash is used? Or where the cash is going? Since this naturally will decrease to get to net income, and we're working backwards, we will have to do the opposite and add it back. Okay. There's another item that we look for here on the income statement. That's going to be a gain or a loss. Those gain or losses on sale of a fixed asset is not part of operating. It is part of investing. So we can use them in this section, but we also have to remove those. Now, since this is a gain, remember the opposite. A gain will naturally increase your net income. So if we're working backwards, we would actually subtract a gain. Then, of course, with a loss, we would naturally add back a loss to net income. Because naturally, it actually decreases to get to it. So we do the opposite. So, yeah, it's going to take a little bit to get used to it. I know, but no worries. Again, we're going to go through it. We're going to also go ahead and try and knock out the homework today, too, to be ready. All right. Those are really the only items we look at on an income statement. The next thing that we go to is the balance sheet. Now, when we look at balance sheets, we need a comparative, okay? We always look at the current year compared to the prior year. So for Rundell, we're in 2016. And if we look at 2015, basically what's happening is we're looking for increases and decreases specifically of current assets and current liabilities. And there's an easy rule of thumb to use when we look at these. So, when we look at a current asset, one, you don't go for cash. Don't look at cash, it's no problem. And so that's what we're actually trying to see. We're going to tag on any accounts receivable, so that's current, inventory, prepaid assets, anything that's going to be gone in less than a year. What happens if the change is actually an increase? So, from 15, we can obviously see it increased in 2016, like accounts receivable. We will do the opposite. We will deduct increases. For inventory, or for any decrease, because inventory does that, as you can see, there it is. You can see that it went down. It went down by 8,000. We're going to add those back. So current assets does the opposite. If it increase between the years, you subtract. If it's a decrease, you add. We're going to add those numbers back. Okay. Liabilities, again, current. Will be accounts payable, crude expense payable, income tax payable. Again, anything that's done within a year, that's not done with investing or finance. So yes. Dividends payable will end in a year, but that's a finance item. So no worries on that. But the cool thing with liabilities, they're probably the easiest. Because guess what? We follow the change. If it increases between the years, we're going to add that. 
we want to add an increase. If it decreases, we're going to discuss it. Okay? Really all we're doing. So again, count the table. You see this actually reduces or decreases. So we're going to subtract the change. Food expense table increase. So we're going to add this change. And then, of course, the income tax table decreases. So we're going to decrease that change. So this is a nice little chart. I will have, let's say, keep this handy. And this will tell you the basics of what we'll subtract from our net income. So there's our increases in current and decreases in current liabilities. Here's our ads. We we'll would add that to our net income. And then plus, there's your depreciation, amortization which will actually be added back, there's the loss of the gains. So this really does show you everything that happens in um, operate, uh, operating. Oh. I got a mic going on. So, the reason why we do these is again for like a top receivable, which again increase that 99000 This is revenue that we recognize for credit sales, but we haven't collected the cash. So, that's why there's no really cash moving. This is why we deduct it. Inventory, again, this shows a decrease. I mean, this is already expensed, which it again requires no cash outlay. So mostly all we're doing is getting rid of stuff that we recognize in a cruel basis that doesn't have any cash movement. That's why we're doing what we're doing. So using the example that we have, there's again our starting point of 108,000. Appreciation. It's being added back. That gain. Being subtracted. And then there's our increases and decreases. Okay. And that's really it of operating activities. Again, for the cash flow statement, this is going to be the hardest part. Okay. After this, it gets really easy. But how easy does it get? It gets so easy that all you need is the journals. That's it. So, investing. This is what I need. We'll have some kind of journal. And all we're looking for, since this is cash flow, is how does cash move? So if I look up land, I can see right here in June 8th, I sold for 72,000 cash. So if I sold, that means I have a positive flow of cash coming in of 72,000. So that's what we're going to put on the financial or the statement of cash flow. Then we see a purchase. So anytime we purchase land for cash, our cash account decreases, which is a negative cash flow. So we're going to actually have this 15000 showing as a negative. Let's subtract it. Again, if we sell, cash is coming to us, we want to add, there's a purchase, cash is going out, we're going to subtract, that's it. 
or it gives us some numbers. I don't have to do anything else. We just look at the cash movement. Same thing here with the building. I purchased for cash. Okay. So what this would be a negative cash flow. Again, I paid money. Cash went out the door. So my cash account decreased. That's all we're looking for. And guess what? That's it for investing. Finance, same thing going on. We'll look at finance uh, accounts. So this is your long-term debt and equity transactions. So basically our prior chapters coming together. Here's our common stock. And we have paid in capital and excess. Now, when it comes to stock, usually on the cash flow statement, we love to combine these issues, the same amount of shares issue, for the amount of money we receive. So here, I received 8000 and 40000 paid in excess. So total, my cash, if these are credits, I mean cash got debited, of $48,000. So since cash came in, my cash count went up, that's a positive cash flow. So we're going to add that on our statement. Dividends. Dividends is going to be a little bit interesting. Got to keep an eye for. Again, we're dealing with cash paid. Cash paid. So we paid out twenty-four thousand. Again, we paid out. Your cash went down. Decrease. Our negative cash flow. For bonds, this company only retired a bond. So again, since we retired the bond, that would have been an increase. So we decrease it by that 50,000 and retired. Now, if we actually get a bond, so we issued our bond, it will have been an increase of cash or basically, again, a positive cash flow. So when you look at investing in finance, you have to think of what happened with your cash account. What is increase, basically money coming in, or what is decrease, money going out? So that's really it. All that investing and finance are not extremely difficult on those. Again, the hardest part of the financials or the statement of cash flows is to operate. Again, as long as you keep an eye like on this chart right here, you're going to be fine. And it's just going through the steps. Again, we're going to go through that with your homework. So, our finished product. And basically, here's our operating activities. So that was right above. Here's our investing in finance. As you can see, cash receipt, our receipt. Sometimes they like to use receipt too. So there's our adding of the land, money coming in. Notice that they kind of group the payments for land and buildings. And since this is less, we subtract it out, 
as money went out. So overall, we have a negative cash flow of three grand. Here, minus, same thing going on. We received about 48000 from the sale of common stock. And we have cash paid out for a time of bond and dividends. I gave us a whopping negative cash flow of 26000 So yes, this is where you see when a bond retires, how much it does affect our cash flow. So an investor will see this, he will notice that the only reason why it's so bad is because a bond came due and mature. But we also paid out dividends, so investors are happy and got money. So what we do is we take the total of these. So basically, 100,000, 500, minus 3 grand, minus 26,000, gives us this increase in cash of 71,500. Then we're going to take the cash at the beginning of the year. This is found on that comparative balance sheet. Okay. Add them together. And this should be your cash at the ending of the year. Now, to make sure it's accurate, you would actually go all the way back to the balance sheet. So here's your comparative. This is where I got the beginning. Notice, here's my ending. If it matches your cash flow statement, you are good. You're done. Everything's correct because Again, this is your change. All three of these numbers should be on the statement. If it does not, there's probably mistakes that happen. Again, commonly in operating. If a mistake does happen, just go back through, check your numbers. Now, if everything checks out, and it still does not tie back to the balance sheet. There could be an issue that we would have to check out on the balance sheet. Maybe fraud is going on. Again, this is a way to actually time catch it. So this breaks out every cash transaction going on. So if something just looks really off, then we may end up doing some research. So this allows an investor to actually know how the blood is flowing in business. So just in case um, the business is trying to hide a little bit, which simply does happen, uh, like Enron, they were very big at hiding how the cash is moving. We had this statement before. We would definitely caught Enron quicker before they basically went belly up. But that's what happens. All right. So that's our main statement. Now, again, this extra little schedule. Now, our uh, example that we were using doesn't really have any of these non-cash investment finance. So we're going to just use another company so you can see what is going on. So we're in non-cash investing in finance. This is only going to be used if we have any financial and investing activities happening. So you have to basically hit both the second section and being non-cash. So again, building being bought for common stock. That's a good example. Again, I have an investing activity in buildings along with a finance activity in common stock. So this will be a non-cash investing and finance. Here, I give the example of land 
the issue for note table. Again, that's an investing activity for land and a finance activity for debt financing of note table. Then last, they have retired $1,000 of note table by issuing common stock. So technically, this is a double whammy of finance. So finance and finance, but it's still considered a non-cash item. So what we do here is again, we'll do a separate schedule. This will show up at the bottom of a financial statement of the statement of cash flows. We just go non-cash investing in finance activities. There's our common stock, acquisition of building, acquisition of land. So we actually think what's going on and of course the retirement and total non-cash was for seventy just and above. So be wary of this. Your problems love to throw this now at you. So again, we're going to go through that so you can see what's going on. And the last big item is one less ratio. Here we go. So it's all like together. All right. So basically, we just have three cash flow. And this is really just how much cash is available to use for any new opportunities. I like to think of this basically for a savings plan. So any unexpected things that happen. And all the formula is, is we take net cash provided by operating activities minus cash plan for investing in long-term assets, and then you subtract out cash dividends. So basically you're taking your operating and subtracting out anything that we're going to plan to basically buy a bit later on, and then any dividends that we've declared. That's basically it for that. That's really it for chapter 14. So, this is just an extra problem. You may go into it, but I'm... Actually, let's go ahead and do it. We'll do this one real quick. Okay. As this is like a more hard probably on the same car, so we'll go through it. You don't think I have anything here. Nope. So, we'll click. Let me go ahead and put in the header. So, boom, boom, boom. All right. So, for this one, we have Larson Co. So, okay. Header, this is the statement of cash flows, and this should be for a year in December one, and it's probably like. 20, 2015, wow. Okay, so first one that we always hit is operating. Again, I'm probably going to abbreviate a lot because I'm going to just go through this. And probably a lot of it spells. So operating activities. All right. So again, first thing that we like to hit, uh, that's pretty much off, but oh well. First thing that we can hit is net income. And we deal with our cash flows. 
again, we'll go and search for anything of net income, which it looks like we are not seeing. Oh, wait, right up here. So, income of 51000 and we declare cash dividends of 13000 of course, net income is 51000 so that is our starting point. Next is basically the changes in our basically get what we want to so add our deduction. Uh, operating activity. So stuff. I know it's not spelled correct, but oh well. So, first thing that we always attack is depreciation. Now, for this problem, depreciation is a little bit more complicated. One is because we have this cell. Okay. There's equipment sold. So what's going on here? Crash this. All right. So what's going on is that we have our comparative right here, accumulated depreciation which is these two negative numbers, this shows a change. But, even though this is in the year, we had a sale. This showed that there was 65,000 more of a depreciation that was going on during the year. So basically, our 150,000, we would have to add back the 65,000 from the cell. So originally, our depreciation should have been 215,000. Minus the beginning. So we actually have a depreciation change of 57,000. Okay. So depreciation. This would have been 57000 since it doesn't give it to us. We do add that back. Here, we have to figure out if it was a gain or a loss, also with this equipment. So remember, to figure out gain or loss, we take how much the equipment is, minus our accumulated depreciation, which is book value, here was sold for fifteen thousand. Our book value was twenty K. So that means we had a loss of five thousand. Again. This is what's showing up here. So if we sold it at a loss. We would have to add back in that loss. Okay. So that was 5,000 being added back. Okay. So next, we would look into our changes in current assets, non cash current assets and our changes in current liabilities. For this example, this workout, we only have three. So accounts receivable, inventories, and accounts payable. So remember we do the opposite for accounts receivable and inventory current assets. And wherever the change is, if it's decreased or increased for our liability, we actually do that. 
first off, AR. So AR decreased. So you can see 85,000 goes to 78,000. So decrease would mean we would add it back. So calculator 85,000 minus 78,000. So we'll add that to 7 grand. Inventory. As you can see, inventory increase, so that means we would subtract it. 101, 500, minus 9,000. So we'll subtract 11,500. Okay. Next. We look at our current liability, which is only accounts payable. This actually increased. So we would add it back because of an increase. So 58,500 times 65,000 is an increase of 3,500. All right. So our total changes, our total, these are total ads, that's not changing of operating. Now I spell it right. So, total change, 7,000 plus 5,000. Minus uh, 11,500 plus 35 is an overall change of 61,000. Okay. So we increased pretty good. So total operation, our whole cash flow of operating. We add these two together, so 51,000 plus 61,000. This is 112,000. Okay, so that's one. Next is investing activity. So basically, again, we're going to look at what has changed for any fixed assets or big assets as we go. The only change that happened with cash is this purchase and the sell. So we purchase equipment of 125. So remember, when we purchase with cash, that's a decrease. So I'm going to say cash payments of equipment of 125,000 went out the door. Okay. The only other one for this example that's talking about Change is again we sold equipment for fifteen thousand, so we basically earned the money. So cash receipt of equipment or sale of equipment that's a positive cash flow of fifteen thousand. That's it. So total. Investing activities is different to those two. So we have 125,000. So 
uh, we have an overall cash loss of 110,000. Ouch. So, there's our investing. And next is our finance. Close enough. <laughs> Activities. Okay. So again, this is mostly looking at a debt or uh, sales of stock. So here we have cash issue for cash. So we do see changes here. So all stock that was issued is for cash. So here difference is thirty thousand. Again, two hundred thousand minus one seven thousand is thirty. Again, we look at a sell of common stock. We also look at the change in paid in capital. What you can see is an obviously two thousand dollar increase. So issue of common stock, you had a gain of thirty two thousand. Next is payment of dividends. As one, we have no long-term liabilities. Now, be careful of this, and don't just take the difference. I have to read. Here, it says cash dividends declared of 13000 Does that mean we paid all of it? No but does increase this liability account. So, we started with 4,000. 4,000. Then, we declared 13,000, but we still have 5,000 left in the account. So that means we actually paid out Twelve grand of our dividends. So of course, if we paid out that amount of cash dividends, that's a decrease in cash. So overall, total cash flow of finance activity would have been a $20,000 increase. Okay. Next, we find out total cash flows for the year. So it's going to be the 112, 110, and the 20. So here, minus one hundred ten thousand plus twenty thousand gives us a overall change in cash flow of twenty two thousand. Okay. Next, we take the beginning cash count. So seventy eight thousand and then we're going to find it in the cash. I just go cash account again, different headings, keep it simple. So we're going to add those two. Equals to a hundred K. So, 100,000 right there. Then we'll figure out and we double check. Oh, there's 100,000. And if we actually look at the difference, our differences, we find the difference is 22,000. 
That's it. It's a cash flow statement. So, any questions regarding of doing a cash flow statement? So, that actually wraps up the lecture portion of Chapter 14.